Hello and a big happy welcome and thank you for visiting my channel Paper Crafting with Rebecca. I'm delighted that you stopped in. Today I'm continuing my patterned paper theme for the month of Christmas in July, but keeping it simple, brief, and even a bit different than my usual Friday videos. Today's patterned paper inspiration is all about diversity and applies to all paper crafting, not just Christmas. Diversity has two definitions and we're going to take a quick look at both of them. Let's start with the first definition first. The state of being diverse. Variety. Okay, that's a no-brainer definition when considering patterned paper. As paper crafters, we can simply take a piece of patterned paper and change it up so that you have more diverse manifestations from the original piece. For instance, here I took a 12 by 12 piece of patterned paper and cut various A2 sized card fronts from it. Then I created a variety of patterned papers from these matching pieces of patterned paper by simply adding spots of silver heat embossing powder on one, heat embossed words on another, and coloring in the pattern on the third one. I could also have added stenciling or watercolor, mixed media pastes, etc. Anything that would change up or accentuate the pattern on the pattern paper I am working with. Now, one 12 by 12 sheet becomes more diverse, presenting a variety of options of paper backgrounds for me to use. So, I meet the first definition of diversity by adding variety. In this case, changing up that one 12 by 12 piece into an assortment of backgrounds for later use. However, in today's social environment, when we hear the word diversity, this first definition is not the one that generally, immediately pops into our heads. So, let's take a look at the second definition and how it relates to paper crafting. The practice or quality of including or involving people from a range of different social and ethnic backgrounds and of different genders, sexual orientation, etc. So often when I'm working with my craft supplies, especially around the winter holidays, I see a lack of the second definition of diversity in the papers and products I'm working with. I just wonder how that makes my friends who have darker skin feel. After all, there is no doubt that there are Santas of all colors, shapes, and sizes hard at work on many a living room floor putting those toys together on Christmas Eve, you know, in order to be ready for the children to wake up and run straight to the tree to see what magic is waiting for them. In comparison, I don't seem to see as much lack of diversity in Halloween papers. This is one of my favorite Halloween papers because not only did the patterned paper designer consider diversity of skin color, but body shape too. This paper is not only more representative of our population, but it is so fun. So what can we do and why should we bother? We are paper crafters. I always tell my hubby, if the problem involves paper, we can fix it. I can't tell you how often I grab my alcohol pens or watercolors to change skin tones on patterned paper. It really isn't that difficult to do. As far as why should we bother? Because I believe it demonstrates a commitment to social responsibility. There's a Spanish artist named Beatriz Gascon, and she sums it up the best for me. Quote, diversity is everything. The world is not always fair. Politics are not always helpful, and we as human beings do not grant an equal voice to everyone. That's a reality that we all should fight every single day and try to make other people understand. I cannot change the world, but I can try to give them a voice in my drawings to give them representations." Unquote. So I guess in my tiny small way, trying to show some small bit of diversity in my art of paper crafting is my way of trying to live up to the ideal set forth by Beatrice. Taking a moment to add more color to the skin of a character on patterned paper doesn't take that long. It's fairly easy to do and, in my opinion, creates a more rounded and inclusive finished product. Remember what I was saying about all those Santas out there making that Christmas magic happen on Christmas Eve? How often do you see a dark-skinned Santa represented in patterned paper? It's an easy fix and one you might want to consider in your upcoming projects. I love a quote from James Armstrong, the president of an organization called Builders of Hope 
out of Dallas, Texas, who has helped to host a West Dallas Christmas block party for over 15 years now. And they have a black Santa who passes out the presents. Anyway, Mr. Armstrong is quoted as saying, quote, To be honest with you, the kids here can't relate to a white Santa because they see in their community black and brown people. And so it is very important for cultural representation that kids see that someone as magical and amazing as Santa can be black like them. Unquote. Keeping all this in mind, I try to remember to add some pigment to some of my Santas and other holiday characters in my paper crafting. I fully acknowledge that my changing the color of a Santa on my holiday cards isn't going to change the world immediately. It is such a tiny action on my part. But maybe that tiny action will open up a discussion that might not otherwise have been broached. Maybe some darker-skinned child will see my paper art and be reminded that their skin tone is shared with the magic of the holidays, too. I hope so. Happy paper crafting! Mm -hmm.